Hi, this is Tim Selmer. Now on Video Wave, we're going to talk to a couple of fuzz tones. Deb, Ira, where can we hear the fuzz tones? What have you got out on vinyl, on tape, in video? Well, let's see. Take it, Deb. Our first release was Ward 81 on a compilation album on Sounds Interesting Records. And uh, that album's called The Rebel Kind. That's our latest video. And then we put out Green Slime, which is on Battle of the Garages, Volume 2, which is a Vox Bomb release. And our 45, Bad News Travels Fast, on Midnight Records. And they're also releasing our mini LP coming out next week called um, Leave Your Mind at Home, which is a seven-song live mini LP of our tour of the Midwest. And then there's the best of the first tones on KTEL. No. <laughs> And one song coming out, I think it's coming out in January on a roar cassette of all garage psychedelic bands, and our song on that's called Cinderella. Now, is it difficult getting people to take you seriously because, because you've been classified as a garage psychedelia band? Um, or do you not <laughs> the desire to be taken seriously? Um, because we're dealing in what most people think of as nostalgia, they don't... Uh, um, it's hard to be taken completely seriously as something that was created right, you know, at the moment, um, because everyone kind of looks back and says, you know, compares it to other things. It's um, but you're not. It's serious. No, it. it. No, we're not really. It's we are and we aren't. You know, we try not to make the comparisons too clear, but they're there. You know, they have to be there because. Uh, um, well, but, uh, it's a take it. Okay. I've lost it. It's it's an era of music that was totally passed over. Oh, some bands came out mm -hmm. then, they had a hit single, then they just disappeared into obscurity. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of 45s, albums, and bands that you just never heard of that are just great. Mm -hmm. And we take a lot from that, put our own feeling into it, our own, some of our own lyrics, you know, we write our own songs, and um, we make it into something new. So as artists, as the people making the music, it's not a nostalgic thing for you to make the music. Not to us. No. But you appreciate the fact that perhaps this, a lot of the audience, and there is a fairly, a pretty sizable audience for, for neo psychedelia in yes, New York, yes. isn't that right? Yes. yes. And uh, and across the country and right. Europe. Well, yeah, yeah, we were going to talk about that. And but you appreciate the fact that to that audience it might be nostalgia or nostalgia for something they didn't know or something they might imagine. It, it seems to me that a lot of the people who like it are too young to really remember it the first right. time around. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to imagine something very new though. to them. Yeah. You know, they might see something very campy in like an AIP right. flick of these, you know, bands, you know, trashing it out there. Some of them come off looking like hippies, but, um, of the 60s movies. But, and that's the only thing that they get to see. That's the but, only thing they get lot, to compare it to. But a lot do take it seriously because it's the only real rock and roll they can get their hands on, you know? They're, yeah. All they have is their radio. And right. Besides the college station, that doesn't do them any good. Right. So yeah. That's all they got. Major releases right now. It's just not rock and roll anymore. Yeah. Do you mind people perhaps interpreting you as campy, or is that something you like to play up? Maybe. We're not campy at all. Right. No. No. We um. We're real tough guys. <laughs> no. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> no. Um, some of our material has some pop tendencies to it, but most of it's very heavy, just yeah. raunchy, raw rock and roll yeah. to basic roots. Not for the faint of heart. No, what we're saying is they seem to appreciate that in France, for instance, there's a great deal of interest in American garage bands. Yes. And you're saying that you even, in Italy, you in had Italy. A we're number 14 on the national charts, our 45. Huh. Bonjour. <laughs> now we're going to see a video, is that Thank right? You. We're going to see a video, and this is Ward... Ward 81, from the Rebel Kind LP. How long ago was this made? January 83. Is that right? January 3? No, what, 81? No, 84. I'm wrong. 84. January and February of 84. Long, so is this going to be at all indicative of what people will see if they come to see the first time? Mm, yeah. But, well, we're not in the video a lot. Uh, there are shots of us in there, but it's mostly the story. Um, but the shots of us, they're there. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll grant you that. This Either. is what you'll see when you come and see the first time. Minus the uh, outpatients. Uh, all right, so on, so on Video Wave, this is the Fuzz Tones, Ward 81 is the video. Ward 81, it's a video from the Fuzz Tones. Right now on Video Wave, we're here with Michael J. and Rudy from the Fuzz Tones. 
the second court, the second duo of people from the South Sounds that were with tonight. That was filmed at Pilgrim Street, which which I know at one time was the largest mental hospital in the world. Yeah, we had a private party kind of thing out there. Is it still any longer a mental hospital? Or? No, they closed it all up. It's just you know an old shell. Whose idea is it to go out there to make a video? That was my brother's. He's the director of our video. His name is Andrew Christensen, and he is open to doing videos for other bands also. All right. Um, did you have to sneak in, or do you apply to the state for permission to use a place like no, that? No, we applied to the state. And they gave it to you? Mm-hmm. Boy. They didn't see us. They didn't see you? No. <laughs> did they say that other people had used, had used that place to film? Did they make movies there or Not something? Not since it was closed. Hmm. Now, the... Uh, Fuzz Sounds have been together as the Fuzz Sounds for four years. Yes. And you sort of, the Fuzz Sounds themselves actually sort of pre predate the psychedelic revival scene in New York, right? We were the first ones. Right. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could say, because when the Fuzz Sounds started, we didn't even know that there were other bands that were doing this kind of thing in other parts of the country. And as we were getting the concept of the band together, we started to hear about other bands like the Chesterfield Kings up in Rochester and the Unclaimed out in Los Angeles. And um, I guess it was just something that, that hit everybody all at the same time. It was just a natural progression of music. You know, you had the 50s revival that came up in the early 70s, and I guess everything 10 years hence goes back 20. Now, you've been involved in the New York scene in other forms and doing other things for a while before the Fuzz Tones happened. And did you find, have you found it easier since you, say, became the Fuzz Tones? A lot. I think, if anything, the Fuzz Tones made it easier for a lot of the other bands that are doing this kind of thing right now. So we established this style of music in the clubs and um, as a, a format to be reckoned with because um, initially when Fuzz Tones were starting to get gigs, we had a, a lot of trouble. They wouldn't even give us, you know, like an opening show at CBGB's on a Tuesday night, you know. But um, now it's been a lot easier for all the other bands that have just started up playing in the dive. It other took clubs a long time. Uh, we were playing about two years before we were taken seriously at all. And then all of a sudden, things started to go pretty smoothly, but it took two years of very hard work and playing in the smallest, uh, crummiest dumps in the city before we got there. Now you say taken seriously, and that's something that surfaced before when we were talking to Deb and Ira. Is it strange to use the word, say, taken seriously in the context of something like the Fuzz Tones? So I mean, I, I don't you want your music to be taken seriously, and you work seriously as musicians. It's as serious as rock and roll will ever be. Uh, if you think rock and roll is serious, then we're about as serious as you can get. The problem is, is that most people's concept of rock and roll is the top ten they see on MTV. And there's very few bands that are out on major labels today and that are really out in the public eye that you could consider rock and roll bands. The only real rock and roll bands you have now are the garage bands and the bands that are doing things on independent labels. And they're not, you know, they're not getting radio airplay and they're not getting MTV airplay. And so what's the aspiration of the Fuzz Tones? Well, it's, it's almost like we are doing our own thing, but within the parameters of what the music industry says. Um, per se, we go out and make a video, you know, which, it, which does suit the fuzz tones, but it also suits the music industry and what the music industry expects of us to play the game with them. Right. And you're pretty optimistic about being reasonably successful playing the game within well, your own limits? I don't think that this band has any chance whatsoever of being as big as Boy George or anything, but I think that the band could, could easily make it uh, successful enough to make a living, and that's all I really care about is to be able to play music for a living, and, the fact and, and something that we enjoy, which is this form of music. And the fact that the Fuzz Tones are pretty well recognized as being sort of uh, near the top, if not on top of the scene here, the psychedelic scene here. Well, we hope. Yeah, when since the psychedelic scene is one of the major things going on in the city, you know, conversely, you can say that you're on top of the scene in New York. So well, it's interesting. We went out on our tour when we only had the um, Ward 81 off the RebelCon compilation, and uh, some places we played, we had 10 people, other places we played, we had, you know, four or 500 people. So it really, really depends. So the rest of the country is pretty hungry for that sort of psychedelic thing yeah, as well? Are. All right, well, good luck with it, and we'll, uh, those, you said there's a mini LP coming pretty soon? Mini LP yeah. should be out by the time this is on. Okay, great. This was Michael J. and Rudy from the Fuzz Tones. I'm Tim Selmer for Video Wave. Bye-bye.